If you're a back-end developer, by the end of this video, you would have learned something new, which I'm very sure would be helpful in your career for building secure applications. So what has happened over here is that Okta, which is one of the security companies, had yet another security vulnerability, which is very interesting, which applies to a lot of us also who are building and running their own products. So listen to this whole video very carefully. So they had this vulnerability where usernames above 52 characters can be logged in without any password or with any password sort of. This is a mind boggling vulnerability. And if you look at this title, it would seem like how the hell does a company like Okta, which is a security company by nature, have this vulnerability? But this one is easy to miss, right? You will blink an eye and you will miss out on what the vulnerability is. So the vulnerability, we'll get into the details, the technicalities of what this is and why this is a vulnerability. But the basic idea is that let's say if you have a login, username and password, if your username is above 52 characters, you can technically just log in with any password. That's the vulnerability. Now, how does it work? Let's take a look. So let's try to understand how modern security works for password storing, right? How you work with credentials in general. So what you do is that, let's say you have a form over here, which has this username field and a password field. So your user, whoever it is, writes the username and password, and they press a button to submit the login form, right? Now over here, this must go over through HTTPS to your backend server, right? Now the server could be anything, could be any language, any stack, I don't care. But what it has to do fundamentally fundamentally is that if it's trying to, let's say if this is creating an account, if it's trying to store this in a database, then what you have to do the bare minimum thing is hashing the password, right? So you cannot just store this password directly. For example, if somebody sent you admin admin123 as username and password, sure, you can store username as plain text if that's fine, but password must never be stored in plain text in your database, right? It should be hashed. It should be not visible to just everyone who's just opening your database. Now, the reason we do hashing is because, first of all, passwords should never be visible even to admins, right? So in case of data leaks, for example, let's say if your data is leaked, right? Whatever passwords and username combinations you had. So if even if the data is leaked, you will leak something like this, which is like a hashed value of the password, right? And this is useless on itself. Until and unless you try to crack this somehow with brute forcing, this password is useless, right? So whoever has the data would not be able to log in as the user unless the whole application itself the application layer itself is compromised so these are like two three main advantages of why you should hash passwords and then how do you hash passwords in the first place is that you use certain algorithms one of them which is the case in point in this case also is bcrypt so bcrypt is a very popular hashing algorithm there are a lot of other algorithms also like md5 sha512 sha1 you know the list goes on so there are like a popular there are a lot of hashing algorithms but one of the most popular hashing algorithms for passwords protection is bcrypt and this is where the troubles start because bcrypt has a very specific property which Okta forgot in their code review. That bcrypt does not take input of more than 72 bytes. So let me show you this by example, what bcrypt is and how this works, right? So you install bcrypt.js, which is like a JavaScript implementation of bcrypt. And once you install this, what you can do is do something like hash sync and just say, let's say admin. Let's say admin is the password I want to store. Now, when I run this over here, you would see that if I console log bcrypt.hash sync admin, you will see I get this garbage value, right? This value is basically garbage. You can't make out anything like what's in the password, what's going on, what's happening. See that if I run this again, I'm getting different string values every single time, right? The strings are completely different, but you still can figure out that the password is admin. You can verify that the password is admin, right? So let's say if I take the string and I hash string, let's say this is the string you store in your database, right? And then you want to check whether the password the user next time entered on the login screen is correct or not. What you will do is you will say bcrypt.compare sync. Here you would pass the real password, which is admin 123 in this case. And here you will pass the hash string, which is the string you want to compare it against. And if you console log this now, and if I remove this one, you will see that if I run this now, we get false because it's admin, not admin123. So now you see that I'm getting true, right? Enable this also, you will 
will see that every time I enter a new string also, this still works, right? So I still get true even though the string is now different. So this is like an intrinsic property of how the bcrypt algorithm works, how you are still able to change strings. So there is not a stable output for a stable input, but still the password can be compared. It, the comparison algorithm works. Now, the real problem in this is that bcrypt has a limit of 72 two bytes. So you see this answer from 10 years ago, 11 years ago almost, says that yes, bcrypt has a maximum password limit. The original article states it's 56 bytes, but there is a considerable amount of confusion on the actual limit. Some people believe that 56 byte limit includes a four byte salt and so on and so forth. So there is a confusion like what it is, but what I have figured out with Node.js at least is that this implementation of bcrypt.js has a limit of 72 bytes, 72 characters. So I want to show you like what happens when you exceed some Thing like this so let's go through this program over here what we have is length not even min length so let's say this is the length this is the length of a string which i'm creating right it's just a random string so if i do a console log for example of string one and i console log string two also right so what you're going to see is that when i run node.js index.ts you see that i get string one and string two as both of them are zeros initially but then string two also has a date sort of attached to it right so we can also have like a dash over here so that it's it's a slightly simplified version so you can see string one is just zeros and string two is also the same number of zeros which are there in string one but then a some random thing some random password or some random date time right now over here the next thing we do is that we hash both the strings so we hash string one also we hash string two also and then we try to compare the hashes with the actual string right now being in hashing algorithm being a hashing algorithm bcrypt should never really give hash one as a correct hash for string two or never it should give a hash two as a correct hash for string one right so that means technically one two and two one should always fail these one two and two one which is like comparing string one with hash two and string two with hash one should always fail right which is what we also see that one one passes because string one and hash one match because that's how it's literally created two two also passes one two falls one two fails and two one also fails right so both of them fail which is expected now let's take a look at what happens when we start increasing the length of the string right so let's say if i go from length of 10 to 50 and if i try to run this again you will see that we still get the same result we have 50 zeros over here this could be the by the way this could be any sort of string of 50 characters right it could be anything so this is length 50 let's just go to length 70 and it still fails which is correct which is how it should behave so there are 70 zeros now let's take a look at 72 and it starts to pass right if we drop it to 71 you're gonna see that it still fails for the one last time because there are 71 zeros now and 71 zeros over here also but the moment you cross 71 and enter 72 you are getting true for 1 2 and 2 1 also that means what bcrypt.js is technically doing is that it's taking the first 72 taking the first 71 characters it's taking the first 72 characters because all of them are zero now and just comparing that part just using that for hashing right so it's completely ignoring the further output which is insane because now if you have a payload which is of 100 bytes of 100 characters in length you are effectively not hashing that at all you are just hashing the first 72 things and it's a security nightmare if you're doing it for your authentication systems which is exactly what Okta was doing at the for this vulnerability let's take a look at what they have written a vulnerability was in, internally identified in generating a cache key for AD LDAP del auth the bcrypt algorithm was used to generate the cache key where we hash a combined string of user ID username and password during special specific conditions this could allow users to authenticate by only providing the username with the stored cache key of a previous successful authentication so it's not exactly used in the real scenario right so they are not using it when you are doing a fresh login probably i don't know like what their cache key is exactly so that this might be true for fresh login also what they do say is that it requires a previous successful authentication right so it's some sort of cache which they are doing a precondition of this vulnerability is that the username must be must exceed 52 characters at any time a cache key is generated for this user because 
because they say they have a user ID, username and password combination, what's effectively happening is let's say you have a user ID of let's say some 20 characters or something and then your username comes in and then your password is there. Now if you make your username long enough that you kick out password from the hashing process altogether then obviously this thing could be anything right which is what we showed. So if I keep it like 100 for example and I make this even like this is Mehul from Codedam right. Now obviously these two strings are not same but the hash for one passes the string for second and vice versa which is crazy. So this was the vulnerability inside Octa's product and they have fixed it obviously now they have shifted the hashing algorithm from bcrypt to pbkdf another algorithm which you can use in the list of all the algorithms which I wrote right but this is a very interesting this was a very interesting vulnerability so make sure that if you are using bcrypt for your hashing algorithm or you know for your password hashes make sure you restrict your password length to 72 maximum either that which is like slightly bad solution or if you are building a system from scratch use an algorithm use a different algorithm like pbkdf2 so that's all for this video hopefully you learned something new if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel that is all for this one i will see you in the next video really soon